Okay, Mayor, all set. Okay. Uh, for this one, I believe, do we have to, we'll record the attendance, Mike? Um, I typically do it in the, in the minutes. Oh, okay. I just note that we have a quorum. Gotcha. Okay. Cause I did see, we did have the, uh, attendance sheet that was attached. Okay. And then are the minutes attached as well underneath the attendance? Yes. Yes. And this is the minutes for the November 2nd meeting. If you guys have all had a chance to review the minutes, uh, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. So moved. Kathy Bagley with a motion. I'll second it. Mayor. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstain. Aye, Sabbath. Minutes <clears throat> are adopted. And then we've got Jennifer. I did see you on earlier. Um, great. So uh, why don't we have a report of the plan? Um, as of, I guess, July 1? Is it as of July 1 or July 1 forward? As of July 1, 2020. Okay. And do you want to, are you going to present your slides or do you want me to put them up? Um, you can throw them up, Mike. All right. Does everybody see that? Yes, uh, although it looks like that. Yeah, you may like want to blow it up. Make it a little bigger. Hold on a sec. Looks Copy like the point. chart up top is missing. Yeah, I got a memory problem on my. Let me try it a different way. My apologies. Unless you're daring, Jen, and you want to. I mean, I, I can share. I have it open on my screen, too. So. All, right. All right, go for it. Can everyone see? Or yes. okay. Maybe just make a little bit bigger. Is that large enough for everybody? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to go through a, a high overview. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name, for those who don't know me, my name is Jen Castellano. I am uh, one of the town's actuaries for your pension plan. Um, and tonight I'm going to go over a high level overview of the July 1st, 2020 uh, actuarial valuation. So on this first page, we have a presentation of uh, five, the last five years of member information. Uh, so as you can see up top, uh, it's broken down into three categories. You have members who are currently employed, um, which is in the blue section, uh, members who uh, have terminated and started collecting a benefit. That's the, uh, the yellowish section. And then members who have terminated employment but have not yet began to collect benefits. Uh, the trend you can see here over the last five years is that the blue shaded area is is getting smaller in size as time goes on. Um, that is because the plan is primarily close to all groups except for the, the police members. Um, so it, it is expected um, as those active members um, stop working, uh, that population will, will, will dwindle down and eventually all that will be left will be the police members as in the active group. Likewise, you can see that uh, both the terminated population and the the members in pay status receiving a benefit have been growing um, as these uh, people have been uh, retiring from service and beginning to collect their benefits. Uh, the bottom half, second half of the page, uh, first we have uh, some information on the active members. Uh, the counts broken down by um, the three main groups being the, the, the town, the board of ed and the police. Uh, and then the average age service, um, your total payroll for the entire active population. 
And then we have a bit of a, a little heat map grid of the uh, age and service distribution of the population. You can see it's the darker the shaded area, the higher the concentration and that for that particular area. Uh, and you can see down the, towards the bottom, uh, you, you see that as the plan is starting to get a little bit older because this is a closed group and new, for the most part, new, new, uh, younger, newer members are not coming in um, except the po police group. Uh, this is an aging population. Um, and a significant number of, of, of members are eligible to receive a benefit at this point in time, whether it be an early, early benefit reduced or an unreduced benefit. And down at the very bottom, we're looking at the distribution of the members who are currently receiving benefits. Uh, you have 264 retirees, a couple disabled retirees, and about 26 uh, beneficiaries or surviving spouses or su surviving uh, uh, beneficiaries of, of members who have passed away. Hey, Jen, could uh, you roll that up so we could... Sorry, that's, yep. That, that's not visible on the... Sorry about that. Sure, that's okay. Um, so uh, one thing I just want to take a pause here, you know, you, the total benefits paid out throughout the, on an annual basis is uh, you know, just north of $7 million a year. So uh, I always like to take a pause and think and just, you know, consider that for a second. You know, this, we get wrapped up and lost in the budgeting and the, how much the cost, annual costs are for these pension plans, but and we sometimes forget that the main reason for this plan, the reason it's in existence is to provide uh, retirement benefits to, to members. Um, and at this point in time, we're paying, you're paying $7 million a year um, to, to uh, past members, past employees of, 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 uh, of the town. Um, so that's no small feat. Moving on to the next page. Uh, here we're going to, we're going to take a look at the plan's um, investment performance over the last uh, five years. And then this top graph, you can see. Yeah, and if you can, uh, sorry. you actually got change it, pages we're still seeing the first one. Oh, that's odd can you see it now not yet hmm. uh, let me stop oh there we go okay i got paused somehow I'm not sure how that happened sorry about that um so in this top graph you can see that it's the it's the the market value, the return on the plan's assets on a market value basis over the last five years. And you can see that the returns have been bouncing kind of all over the place um, for the last you know, five years or so. Uh, this is mainly why we smooth assets for purposes of calculating your funding contribution. And for those who don't know what smoothing assets means, um, it means in any given year, we don't fully recognize um, investment gains and losses uh, in that year. We, we phase it in over a five-year period. Um, and what I be, mean by investment gains and losses, I mean the return um, as compared, the return on the plan's investment as compared to our assumption for that given year. So for example, uh, for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2020, we assumed that the plan would have a, an investment return of 6.5%. In reality, it returned about 1%, which is pretty much in line with most of my other clients for that that time period, you got to remember that that time period um, captured uh, the, the market downturn at, at, the, at the start of the pandemic um, and didn't have much time to recover before the end of the, the, the fiscal year. Um, you know, I, I, as I'm sure Chris will talk to later, speak to later, that the plan has done well year to date for the current fiscal year. Um, but at that point in time, it hadn't had a chance to rebound much. So the return for the year was 1% versus our six and a half percent assumed return that produces an investment loss. Um, but again, we don't recognize that fully. We recognize it. We're only gonna recognize 20% of it this year and 20% next year, 20% the year after, so on and so forth until the full loss is recognized. Likewise, for any gains, um, you know, you go back a couple of years, there was a 9% return versus uh, an, a return assumption of around six and a half or six and three quarters, most likely. Um, there was a gain there. We didn't recognize it all at once, and we've gradually recognized that over, over time. Down below, you can see this results in two different asset values. We have the market value of assets in the, the darker shaded green bars, and our actuarial value of assets in the, in the lighter shaded bars. Um, and you can see they don't, they don't match, 
But what you can see is that the darker bars kind of are bouncing around a little bit, whereas the green bar, the lighter shaded green bars are a little bit more steady. Um, in the current year, you can see there's about a $4 million difference between the market value and actuarial value of assets. And that is because uh, the, the losses from the last two years, uh, if you recall, um, the, assumption, the returns have been lower than our assumed return over the last two years. So there's been some losses in the last couple of years. Those haven't been fully recognized. So our actuarial value of assets is a little higher, a little inflated uh, currently. Um, as time goes on over the course of the next five years in the absence of any gains or losses, these two figures would converge and they'd be the same. On to page three. Um, this page is just to give you some, some background, some information as to how we come up with our return interest rate assumption that we recommend to you on an annual basis. Uh, we've been talking about it for years, year over year. Um, and and th this page uh, provides the math kind of behind that assumption. Um, up top, we have a graph of the plan's target asset allocation. Um, uh, with a uh, graph um, with expected returns and you know, the risk associated with each particular asset class. Uh, the larger the bubble, uh, the higher your allocation to that particular asset class. Um, this black dot in the middle um, represents your entire portfolio uh, as of, based on your current asset allocation. We take your current asset allocation, we apply um, Milliman's capital market assumptions as of a particular date. And for this example, we, we use the capital market assumptions as of June 30th, 2020, um, to come up with our best long-term, our best estimate of your long-term rate of return. Um, and that is down below. And our best estimate as of June 30th, 2020, of your, of your long-term rate of return without any adjustment for active management or any alpha for that uh, is about 6.25%. Um, this graph below shows the expected return. We look at the 50th percentile. Um, so is expected return over different time horizons. And you know, you can think of it as, you know, in a short period of time, the market can be very volatile. It can go, there's a bigger, wider range of outcomes um, in the in the middle. Uh, the, the average, so to speak, is that there's a much wider range of outcomes. Um, as time goes on, that range tightens. Um, and we're, think, we're talking about uh, a pension obligation, a very, very long-term obligation. So we usually tend to the 50 to 75 year um, horizon for determining this assumption. And that's where we arrive at the 6.26% assumption without any adjustment for uh, active management. And so keep that in mind when we get to the next couple of slides as I talk about um, the return assumption that is currently being used and what, where we're moving with that. On the next page, on page four, uh, we have a history of the plan's uh, funded status over the last five years. And you can see that the funded status has been steadily growing um, over, over the last five years. And this is predominantly because, this is for a couple of reasons. One is because members are still actively accruing benefits. So benefits are getting larger. Um, so with that, the, the, the plan's uh, liability will, will naturally grow. Um, but uh, another reason, and the, 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 probably the larger reason for the growth of the, of, the, of the accrued liability is that we have been steadily decreasing the interest rate assumption used for calculating the plan's uh, accrued liability. And uh, there is an inverse relationship associated with that. The lower the interest rate, the higher the liability. So back in 2016, the interest rate was 7.25%. Um, as of July 1st, 2020, the interest rate is down to 6.5%. Uh, also thrown into these numbers is uh, in 2019, last, uh, last year, we updated the mortality assumption to reflect a, a, a relatively new uh, mortality table that was issued by the Society of Actuaries that is specific to public pension plans. Um, it's the first of its kind. Um, it's a better representation of the longevity um, and expected lifetimes of public plan members. Uh, so we adopted that, that was adopted and, and it had also had an upward, uh, some upward pressure on the crude liability. 
in the middle graph, um, it's just the top graph broken down by the different, different statuses that we talked about earlier. And then down below uh, these last two graphs uh, is your unfunded liability. Um, so the difference between the total accrued liability and the plan's assets, so the shortfall of the funding at any given point in time. Um, and you can see that that's grown and that's because the accrued liability has gone up because we've been lowering the interest rate assumption uh, gradually over time. And that likewise, that has impacted the funded ratio in the bottom graph. Um, it's, you know, been, it's bec because we've been making these interest rate assumption changes, it's been putting out some upward pressure on the liability. Uh, and there's been some recent asset losses. So it's, it's, it's deteriorated the funded ratio slightly. Um, but at 71%, you're, you're about the, in the average um, for the state, um, I'd say right around the middle of the pack as far as funded ratio is concerned. On this next page, we have a history, a five-year history of the town's actuarially determined contribution. And again, you can see it, you can see over, over time, this has been, uh, you know, steadily increasing. Uh, and the main reason is for the same reasons that I talked about on the, on the previous page. Uh, in the middle, on the bottom graph, we break down the contribution into the three main components uh, that make up the contribution amount. Uh, the first being the normal cost, and that's the amount in the blue shaded area. You can see that that amount is fairly steady year over year. The normal cost represents the value of benefits that are expected to be earned over the next year by your active members. Okay, and this is net of any employee contributions is offset by the, the, the part of that, those benefits that are funded by member contributions. The green shaded section is what we refer to as the past service costs. And this is the amortization of the unfunded liability. So the unfunded liability has been growing, therefore the past service costs has been growing. Um, you can think of the past service costs as a, like a mortgage, it, it's, it's a pay down of, of, a, of the unfunded amount over a specific period of time um, based on a specific interest rate. Um, and it is set to increase every year with a, a growth rate assumption. And the small piece, the, the pink piece is just an interest adjustment to take into account the difference in timing between when we calculate the numbers and when the contribution is actually made. Now, if the plan were fully funded, this green section would completely go away and you're, you would fund the normal cost year over year. You just pay for the benefits that are earned each year and, and, and stay at 100% stay at funded theoretically. And this last page, it's a page full of a lot of numbers. Let me just see if I can get most of them into the screen. Um, and it's got several columns of information, uh, but it's basically, it's essentially us walking through the process and the different iterations we did this year. The far left-hand column is just a, a reiteration of the results from the 2019 valuation. Uh, the next column is what we call our baseline results. Uh, and this reflects updated asset information and updated census information. So we collect sen updated census and asset information on an annual basis as of July 1st each year. So the baseline reflects that updated amount um, and what the result is. And so you can see um, towards the bottom of the page, uh, the actual, uh, based on the baseline, just updating assets and updating the data, the actuarially determined contribution increased um, by about three hundred thousand dollars from from the previous year. The next column, the middle column, uh, reflects any plan changes, uh, and the only plan changes this this year were some updates to employee contribution rates. Uh, that has very little impact; has no impact on the assets because the assets aren't there. These are prospective plan con employee contribution rates. It has a very minor impact on the accrued liability, um, but where it does have an impact is on the, the normal cost um, because it's, a, it's, a, it's an offset to the total normal cost. So each additional dollar employees put in uh, is one less dollar the town has to contribute to fund the benefit. So you can see uh, that resulted in a small decrease of about $30,000 of the actuarially determined contribution this year. 
The next column looks at lowering the interest rate assumption from 6.75% to 6.5%. You'll recall a couple pages back, I, our current estimate, best long-term estimate of the plan's investment return assumption is about six and a quarter. That's without active management, maybe with some active management taking into consideration that's a slightly higher number. Um, but nonetheless, 6.75, we felt 6.75% was still too high. So we made the recommendation to drop the interest rate down to six and a half percent this year. And this is a, this is an assumption that we've been monitoring for several years and have been making adjustments. And um, you know we'll continue to do that going forward. So doing that uh, again increased the contribution from just over 3.9 million to about 4.3 million. So almost a $400,000 increase in the contribution as a result of that change, because again the lower the interest rate, the higher the liability, a bigger unfunded amount to pay down over time. And then after some discussions with, with Mike, uh, we, we uh, just made an adjustment to the amortization period for the police group um, from, from 14 years. We bumped it back up to 15 years. The police group is still an open group. Um, so we don't wanna see that amortization period to get too small. Um, because they're still accruing benefits and we don't want the unfunded, we don't have, to, the shorter the period, the, the more volatile the contribution can be. So we, uh, we made that slight adjustment to, to it, which resulted in a slight decrease um, in the contribution as a result, brought it down um, about $70,000 to just north of 4.2 million for the year. Down below, we can see all these numbers broken down by group for those that are interested. Uh, between the town, the Board of Ed, and the police. Um, and that is all I have. I, I welcome any questions anyone may have. Thank you, Jen. Is there any questions from the committee? And actually, if you want to take it, stop sharing your screen for a second. And we can have a broader discussion. Anybody with any questions on that? I know it was a lot to take into consideration. Okay, hearing none, we're back up to the agenda. And we've got, we wanna to go to Chris now. I think we can do that. Chris, if you wanna give your quarterly update, Great. Thanks, Mr. Mayor, and, and, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. The only thing I would add on to Jen's presentation, which is great, um, you'll remember uh, on the heels of our most recent meeting in February, we did alter the asset application construct a little bit. I'm sure Jen will pick that up on a go-forward basis with her analyses. You'll remember we took a fixed income down 5%. Uh, and we dispersed and allocated that across equities that kind of partnered to this idea of um, uh, kind of modified return expectations from going forward. So um, you'll remember kind of curiously enough, uh, uh, we had kind of modeled absent any type of manager contribution with our inputs, which are pretty close to Milliman's, um, a six and a half percent return with that change was, was the motivation for that. So um, uh, uh, again, I guess on a go forward basis, Jen, right, we'll see some of that uh, analytic um, so I am uh, Mr. Mayor, I will uh, share here, bear with me uh, for just a minute. Let me do this. Um, yeah. uh, what uh, happened to my, it didn't work. Uh, Um, hmm. Bear with me, folks. I don't know why this is not coming up now. I'm going to try to do this again. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know why my screen is doing this now, Mike. Can you get it up, uh, the packet up on your screen? I'm seeming to having the same problems now. And it worked fine in our previous meeting, but I don't know why I cannot get this. Great, as we can work, uh, we can work off of this. I'll defer to you, Mike, on how you want to blow it up exactly. So again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks. Uh, we'll, we'll be pretty quick to the punch here. We know you've had a busy agenda, and 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 we have the proof folks as well. Um, just quickly, we had shared, uh, so it's not a surprise to anyone, we had shared with, with Mike and Gary and a couple others a, a rebranding effort that um, we undertook uh, and uh, on a go forward basis. Um, our new name is Fiducian Advisors, as you see depicted there in the middle of the page. Um, no changes to the team, no changes to the firm, no changes to the way we work on your behalf. Uh, and everything really is identical. So uh, just really a rebranding effort. Um, I thought it was an opportune time to do that. Our merger actually with the DeMeo folks in Chicago has come together even ahead of schedule and we felt it was a good time to, to freshen up the brand. So um, thanks again for your, your, your trust and confidence, but uh, rest assured it's, it's really business as usual um, from our standpoint. Um, if we could, Mike, jump ahead to, um, We'll kind of hit a couple of highlights on markets. Hmm, I wonder why it's not uh, it's not loading the content. Huh? Did um, you want to? Yeah, that's odd. Um, can you, if you skip ahead, Mike, can you skip ahead here a page or two? Because the fiduciary, some of the first pages of the fiduciary governance is just a re repetition of what Jen had mentioned. So it was just reproducing that information. Is there? I'm going to try a, a different, I'm going to try your document instead of my combined document, Chris. Okay. And my, my apologies to everyone. No, mine too. I don't know why my thing is at. It, it, there may be just a little too much going on when I, when I put all those documents together. So, how's that? Oh. There, we oh, there we go. Perfect. I think you got it. Uh, so this quarter, the, the, our fiduciary governance centers on just a quick fee review, and we like to keep the committee apprised, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the cost, uh, the investment cost, if you will, associated with your plan. So if we skip ahead, Mike, to... Um, uh, a, a, a next a couple of pages out. That's what I was just talking about. Here we go, right here. So just it just as captures kind of the investment centric, if you will, aspects of, of your program from a fee standpoint. So as you all know, right, the heavy lift, if you will, comes in the form of, of the investment management fees paid out to your third party managers. Um, and that today, based on your current allocation for the plan is about one half of 1%. You see that highlighted in the middle of the exhibit, Mike's showing it um, 50 basis points. The other kind of recurring cost from an investment standpoint are, uh, you know, Prudential's doing all the administrative and custody work on your behalf. That comes in at approximately four basis points. Uh, and then we have our, our fee as well of, of, of 46,000. Um, which covers everything that we do on behalf of your plan on an annual basis. So I think when you do the arithmetic there, um, right, you're, you're, you're coming in somewhere, uh, you know, akin to call it uh, inside of 60 basis points or thereabouts when you add all the math up. So I think it compares pretty favorably to what we see for other public funds, just in terms of the, the lift, if you will, from an investment standpoint. And it kind of, this is our, our, our kind of time in the cycle, just to assure the committee that we think your fee construct is, is competitive and appropriate. Um, you don't have any recommendations or changes. And, and just for the record, we've cataloged that and uh, obviously we'll continue to monitor on your behalf. So really from a governance standpoint, that's uh, uh, kind of the, uh, the totality of the information there. Um, no action items for, for, for the committee to contemplate. So with that uh, 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 set aside, if we could, Mike, we'll scroll ahead here, just pick a couple of pages. We've got lots of capital market detail. If folks have had a chance to look at this, load it into the book, I'm just gonna hit a couple of highlights. Um, my, our big picture observation, which I think probably will resonate with everyone is that we'd be hard pressed to think a year ago, 
with the onset of the pandemic that we would be looking at some of the capital market returns that we've had over the last year. So they've been absolutely really stupendous. Uh, and the reasons for that are two or threefold. At the onset of the pandemic, the reason for that was you'll remember that the authorities ran in and very aggressively with cutting interest rates, creating liquidity programs to support markets, uh, and really kind of using all the tools at the Fed's disposal uh, uh, to try to keep the, uh, a functioning, if you will. And they were largely successful doing that. And that has since been joined, as you all know, by a lot of fiscal stimulus. We depict here on the page kind of the most recent program, the American Rescue Plan Act, which you all might remember is close to $2 trillion. Lots of focus on the consumer and the individual uh, to encourage spending and, and, and economic activity. And, and, you know, kind of the early view on that is it's been successful. We had the CARES Act about a year or so ago, which was a very large program as well. So all of that stimulus has really encouraged um, investors, emboldened investors, if you will. And more recently, of course, as you all know, we've had you know noteworthy gains on the vaccination distribution front. And you put all that together, and if we skip ahead, Mike, um, just a, a page, uh, uh, why don't we, yeah, there we go. Why don't we go to this page? You'll see there in the one year numbers, kind of where Mike's highlighter is, just some really stupendous returns for equity markets around the world. 56% for the S&P 500 is kind of a, a ready example. Up above that, you'll see um, decent returns for fixed income as well. Somewhat more modest, as you would expect, particularly recently given that rates have moved a bit higher. But nonetheless, really, when you look across the capital market spectrum, we've had really wonderful returns. Um, and certainly, you know, a, a numbers that we wouldn't have anticipated. Obviously, we'll take them and we're encouraged by them, but it's been just a, an unprecedented market uh, in terms of what's gone on over the last four quarters. Um, so I think, Mike, with that as background, we could let's skip ahead all the way to the allocation exhibit. Again, there's lots of, inf there we go, right here. Um, and just uh, we'll, we'll show you a, a couple of data points here. So here are the assets for the pension plan at the end of March almost $119 million, as you see depicted there. Um, you'll remember Jen's uh, data had the, uh, looking at the target allocation column there, you'll remember there she had a 27.5% fixed income total. And remember what we just mentioned, right? We had trimmed that down a little bit, put some more money into equities um, to respond to the fact that interest rates are very low, the expectations for fixed income near term are very low, we wanted to reposition the portfolio accordingly um, uh, to try to best to give the plan, of course, the best opportunity to generate uh, the type of returns that you're looking for. Um, the portfolio from an allocation perspective uh, uh, and, and the manager front, uh, we think remains in pretty good working order. Um, and, and that based on that recent reallocation, we don't have any other larger allocation moves for the to report to the committee. The one thing we will be working on, kind of akin to what we've done in the past, is we're going to work with Michael and the Prudential folks on a higher conviction idea with an international equity. This is an action we took um, in the previous session with the volunteer firefighter plan. Um, we're going to rotate out of PICTE International. And we're going to add a new international equity manager there alongside Dodge and Cox and, and the Hartford Schroeder's Fund. Uh, it's the uh, American Fund's Euro-Pacific Growth Strategy for those of you who um, might have interest. Um, when we talked to our analysts uh, who cover international equity, it just felt it was an opportune time uh, to make that switch. So again, no changes to the larger strategy. Operating within the confines of the investment policy statement you've previously approved, um, but just going with a higher conviction name with, with an international equity. So we'll keep you posted on that. But otherwise, the lineup and in, in roster is in good work and order, as is the allocation. If we switch ahead, Mike, quickly to the next page, hopefully everyone's sitting down and can appreciate the one number I'd probably start with. You'll see the one year number that's not a typo. Over the last year, the plan has generated a return of close to 
Um, you can see that number is readily outpacing kind of the broad market, uh, you know, benchmark, excuse me, that we use to catalog that return. Um, and so there's been good work being done by the managers. Um, and what we've been encouraged by over the last year is you're seeing contributions from the fixed income managers and both the domestic and international cohort equity manager cohorts as well. And, and, and that's uh, kind of always encouraging to us when you've got diversified sources of incremental return. And it was not to downplay it, it was a solid first quarter as well. You see the last data point there, the plan was up a little bit more than 4% and again, outpaced the benchmark. So um, certainly uh, a year like none other and, 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 and figures that, uh, I, I've been in this business for close to 30 years and I don't think I've ever reported to a municipal pension plan a one year return of 45%. So um, I, you folks are at the, at the top of the rolls for that result. And um, uh, we'll see what happens on a go forward basis. What I leave you with is just a final comment is we, you know, I don't know that we're gonna get 45% again for the next year. If we do, we'll take it, but it's more likely, right? that. We are transitioning to normality. There is an expectation that with all the stimulus and with the vaccination programs that we will have a more stable global economy and a growing one in the back half of this year and into 2022. That generally should be a um, constructive backdrop for investing, right? And we're cautiously or guarded optimistic that you know, we'll continue to have decent markets on a go forward basis, but obviously baked into the one year number you see on the page here was really um, followed a, a pretty sharp drawdown you'll remember back in, in February and early March of last year. So we'll see what the future brings us, but um, otherwise I'll pause there and uh, uh, see Mr. Mayor what questions the committee might have. Sure. Thank you, Chris. Uh, are there any Questions for Chris? Other than I wish my IRA was getting 45%. <laughs> I'd raise my hand as well, Mr. Mayor, for that. Okay, looks like there's no questions for uh, Chris on this. And now I think we'll go move over to Lisa. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So Mike, we can try like the last meeting I was successful in sharing, or we could just go right to your deck. How's that? Does it work? Perfect. Beautiful. You read my mind. Well, it's nice to see you all. For those I haven't met yet, I'm Lisa Warzeka with Prudential and my wonderful colleague Pam Herkus is also on the video tonight. She's been working with the town for many years. So we're happy to see you all. I know we're looking forward to seeing everybody in person, hopefully soon. Um, so my section, I, I won't belabor the point. Uh, Chris already went over the investments and the asset allocation. The good news that I'll share is that since uh, the end of the first quarter, where we were at $118.8 million, as of opening bell this morning, we had some earnings that brought us up to $121.6 million. So a nice first quarter you know, between contributions into the plan, but, but certainly also the, the economy and the market upswing. Mike, the next page, please. Thank you very much. And so what this page shows for those of you who have sat in these meetings before is the fund activity over the most recent eight quarters. I'm looking at the second row for this column on the right, January 1st through March 31st of 2021. We started the year at about $113 million. Receipts or deposits into the plan over, the, over three months, actually in January and March, nothing in February were $2.334 million. We had disbursements or payments made out to pensioners of $1.9 million. Positive market change, as Chris mentioned, I'll take that 45% too, Chris, um, happily. And we see that we ended the quarter again at 118.8 million. Again, today, 121.6. Any questions on this page? Okay, Mike, one more page, please. And what I like to show is where were we last year? Now, 2020 was crazy with volatility, um, just ups and downs all across the board. So 
we are significantly higher than where we were a year ago. Last year, we ended the first quarter at $84.7 million. And again, here we are at 118. So we'll take those returns, Chris. Feel free to keep um, investing all this money like this. We know you're personally responsible with your, um, your, your, your glass ball. You're looking into telling us what's gonna happen, reading the future. Don't put that in the notes, Mike. We don't wanna put Chris on the hook. His crystal ball. Chris, Chris's compliance department just uh, just dialed in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that that's really it for the prepared report. There's not too too much activity from our end quarter to quarter uh, um, as it relates to the plans. Um, are there any questions at all on last year compared to this year? Otherwise, yeah. So I think it's page fourteen or so, Mike. Thank, thank you. So as you know, for those of you who, who I've presented to in the past, each quarter I try to put an interesting piece in the book that can be shared publicly among the committee, townspeople, employees. This is not any sort of sales pitch. There's no action to be taken here. But uh, Prudential did release a white paper in October of last year that I found really interesting and I shared it with several people I know. Just interesting facts and things to think about uh, in terms of your social security benefits, specifically for married couples what it means if somebody has a higher benefit, can you defer that higher benefit, how to delay your payments. So just some interesting information, feel free to peruse it. Um, there is a public website on the bottom, prudential.com backslash insights, those all sorts of white papers on that site, feel free to peruse that at your leisure for all bunch of different topics. So Mike, that's all Pam and I had for today, unless there's any questions for either of us. Any questions for Lisa or Pam? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm good, okay. And then Mike, uh, yeah, I'll turn this over to Mike. You've got on the agenda documentation of the following requests processed by the finance department, a couple of accounts. Yes, yeah, I'll just run through those quickly for you, Mayor. Those are always included. Um, for the committee's information, they don't require any action. Um, all, all these transactions are uh, happening in the normal function of the plan and the provisions of the plan document. Uh, there were two town retirees during the quarter. There was one retiree from the police department and none from the Board of Education. Um, there was also a request uh, from the police department uh, for a purchase of uh, accredited service from uh, previous service in the Hartford Police Department. And then lastly, um, there is a provision for uh, police retirees with 25 years or more of service for an annual cost of living adjustment that becomes effective on April 1st each year, um, calculated as of Dece the prior December 31st. So my office does that calculation. Uh, we identify the, uh, the qualifying participants in the plan who get that cost of living adjustment. And then we work with Pam and Lisa to, to adjust their uh, monthly payments. Okay. Do we, do you have in front of you, what's the uh, current COLA at, if we're at, in, are we increasing it by 1.4 or? Yes. So that's, that it's a 1.4% increase to each, each qualifying individual's monthly benefit. Gotcha. Okay. Any questions for Mike on um, Mike on these at all? Looks good. Okay. Any new business, uh, Mike, before us? Nope, none that I'm aware of. And no old, biz old business to go over? Okay. Sounds like everybody is good with uh, what's been presented. No questions for anybody. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Anthony Dignati, uh, second. I'll second. Karen, all those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Okay, great. Lisa, Pam, Jen, and Chris, thank you all.
again for this. Thank you. This I think this is the last one of the day for us. <laughs> so we appreciate it. Thank you all. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Thank you.